Hi, it's Toby here from Ride ADV. Um, I thought uh, we're based here on the central coast of New South Wales in Australia um, and we run a fleet of um, 700 Tenere's. We've probably now to date accumulated over 300,000 kilometres with our bikes uh, in the fleet um, since we got our first one in 2019, which was the first one in Australia. Actually, we, uh, we had it just before we did the release for Yamaha Australia. So we've got a lot of experience with these bikes and we pride ourselves on trying lots and lots of things. We've got some earlier videos in our series here, and if you go back and you'll see them. We haven't done anything for maybe, well, Roosters on the camera. What have we done, Roosters? 18 months since we probably did something? Probably 18 months, yeah. We've just been flat out, coming off COVID and, and all that sort of stuff. It's been it's been pretty busy. So we thought we'd update a whole heap of stuff, um, answer a whole heap of questions, and we'd go from there. All right, so I guess we'll start with um, our affiliations. Um, we have some affiliations, and when I say affiliations, we have uh, supporters, uh, sponsors. Um, um, so we'll start with Yamaha Australia. So Yamaha Australia supporters are fantastic. They're a passionate bunch of people that ride bikes. You won't get anyone better to deal with. They've been fantastic. We're also supported by Adventure Moto. Uh, Adventure Moto again, the people that ride bikes. I was only out riding with Jen and Steve from Adventure Moto yesterday. Um, they're people that ride bikes and understand. They've been supporters since forever. Link International with Pirelli and RK chains and, and and just to help us out with tubes and stuff. Now, we pay for all that stuff, okay? Uh, and we, one way or another, sure, some of the stuff we get really cheap, but the idea is we pay for everything. And our relationship with Camel, which is a, a, you know, another great supporter, we still pay for our Camel stuff, okay? We get it cheap, we get it trade, but they've been great. And, and you know, we've sent feedback live uh, on Facebook and stuff to Corey about his rear tail tidies and stuff like that. So, and we'll talk about tail tidies later and, and why we don't run them. Um, we'll talk about what we do run and why we do and what we've tested and what we haven't. So, if there's any questions, probably just put them in underneath and we'll do our best to answer them, but I'm not going to promise we'll get to them all either, but we'll do our best. We'll have a crack, all right? So, I'll go over. Also, right now, while we're in the workshop, you know, we have a, one of our old bikes here, which is now a customer purchase bike and we just about put a camel high exhaust on it. Um, so it's in the in the shop here, and so we've got our Camel products here that we've been getting ready to get going. The twin pegs here that we've been running, we'll talk about them later on. Um, so there's always something going on in the workshop. Uh, another another X one of our bikes. We're doing a custom build. We get new bikes from um, dealers that come here, and we build them for interstate customers and ship them off. We deliver them. We deliver the last two to Queensland. So um, you know, help hand them over and do whatever. These are ex-fleet bikes, and um, and now we're just building them up to basically what our spec is. We have a uh, we have a, uh, a spreadsheet. We go through it with all the options. Um, we will fit things we don't like, but we do also. You know, we'll have a chat about it and talk about whatever. All right. And I get lots of other questions, like serious. I get questions, and I'll try and cover them off. The beer of choice at Ride ADV is great in Auburn, super crisp. So those that aren't one. So I'll start on my bike. So a couple of things, I'm a great advocate of GPSs, okay? I talk about GPSs a lot and why we use GPSs, but people are trying to convince me that telephones are better, so I can't look at a telephone. I don't want to look at a telephone. If I have a telephone for a GPS, and I've heard all the excuses, oh, you know, it got wet, it stopped working, battery went flat, whatever, okay? If you're using that for your GPS, you no longer have anything. You no don't have a GPS, you don't have a phone, you don't have anything. So, G and you know why the GPSs don't, GPS companies, Garmin's, don't put phones in them? Because they're a GPS. Anyway, our GPS of choice is XT, uh, XT Zumo. This one has HEMA maps in it. All the other ones we have, have just the standard map that comes in them. But because this phone rage is all to go, I decided to try the phone software and a tablet, okay? So that's a Samsung military grade tablet. I can't think of the name brand of the tablet. It's in a holder, it's waterproof. Now, it's good. It's not as bright as I would like. Uh, it looks okay there, but in the sun it's not as good. But look, it's good, it works okay. Couple of things, I'm running the DMD2 software. I can't navigate, I can't go, where's the closest pub, where's the closest pie shop, hospital? service station, etc. It won't navigate me to that. Okay, I can't do that. Put a route in, easy to share, share by it, sure, all that's great. But that side of it doesn't work. Now, while the tablet's military grade and waterproof, 
if I'm charging it, even with that seal that's supposed to be around that, I stand the rain, water gets in there like your iPhone, it says charging port, water contamination, don't charge. So you pull it out, and then running full brightness, which you need, that lasted about 35 minutes. Now I don't have any navigation if I was relying on a phone-based phone software. And I'm sure there's gonna get a whole heap of, you know, uh, whatever, that doesn't do it. And they've been great. And we just put a cover on them, we bought off eBay, I think Adventure Moto sell them, they're just a 3D printed thing, just if you drop it and you know, it goes like that. So that's where we're at with navigation. Um, we have, and I just need to come to another bike rooster. Yeah. We have moved pretty well all of our GPS's up the top here. Now, all of our bikes run two GPS's. Uh, if we are pre-running, we get two lots of two lots of uh, the track, so I don't have to worry about lost data or corrupt data or something happening. I've got a backup, all right? Early GPS's on 660's, we tried running them up here on the bar. And the Montana's, we had a lot of trouble with 650 Montana's failing, they, you know, they would rattle even, something come loose and so on. So we gave up, we moved away. We've moved them all back up here. We decided to give them a try. The XT Zumos have been fantastic. Haven't missed a beat up there. Even the old 680 Montana, we've got it still working. But we are using the Camel uh, anti-bobbles. These dashes do wobble around a little bit. Um, and these, these work great. Now, I did try a set off Wish or Alley or something like that. One of them's over the back of the shed in the paddock, the bush somewhere, I cracked the shits and threw it because it just wasn't lining up right and this bar was out and this wouldn't line up. It was just a shit fight. Uh, we tried a couple of the um, uh, uh, 3D printed wedges and all these, I think they all broke. So we've stuck with these. Uh, luckily they're done by Camel and we stuck with these and they've been great. So all our bikes have those fitted now. So they've been fantastic. And then the boys put a back up on the handlebars. And so Crash, this is just this is Crash's one, there's two XT's. This is Rooster, he has his XT up the top. And uh, Rooster had, has a 700 Montana. Uh, if, you've had a, if you have a 700 Montana, they're fantastic. If your car's rolling away, you can put them under the back tire because that's about all they're fucking good for. Seriously, very disappointed 700 Montana. I see a lot of them on our rides and if you put a track in them and you follow them, it seems to work. Okay, I'll give it that. Um, and again, people have uh, have bought those with a with a Garmin. What's the Garmin tracker? Epa uh, Reach, Enrich. Have an Enrich built on, built in on. Again, for mine, if I fall off and smash my GPS, then my Enrich doesn't work. If I fall off and I'm detached from the motorbike and it's attached to my in my GPS, I'm not near it. My spot tracker, and I just happen to like a spot tracker goes up here on my shoulder, it's with me all the time. It's right there, right? It's with me. And I'm not even gonna get the whole EPIRB. I like a spot tracker. I don't like an EPIRB because it's, you know, I push the button, I hope it works, whatever. Whatever works for you. As Rooster says, you do you. I like the spot trackers, so we're not about that today. But if you have it all built into the bike and you become separated from it, okay? Then you can't reach it, no good. That's just me. Right, uh, talk about seats. Uh, we've always run the standard seats. I, I, I like the standard seats. But anyway, I bought a, a concept standard white seat on my bike, one piece. Yeah, I like it, it's good. Um, I like the cutaway in here. It's 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 nice, it, it's great. I, it's not, it's not huge. It's not, wow, look, it's so much better. It's just better, I guess. I don't know. I didn't mind the standard seats. Um, so anyway, I've got that. I've just got a, just grabbed a, a low seat we've got for a customer here. So you can just see the difference there. And Rooster, are you guys still swapping your seats out, keeping your old ones? Yes, we did. Yeah, so you just, they, they soften up a bit. Yeah. And so when you guys are building them, you're keeping your old seats. Yep, I've had the same seat and this is my third bike now. Right. So. All right, so air filters. Initially, I'll just cover this off quickly. Initially, we were running the uni filter that came with the with the bike and these were the early ones and I was very critical on on that's pretty like you can see it, how hard I can distort that how that would go sealing around the airbox um, so then they came out with this so that's fantastic great idea 
Um, yep, so that went on there, but again, it was an add-on. Um, you still had this at the top, which didn't matter because that's not what you need to seal it through here. Keep it out, that's fine. Um, but then they made a batch of these, I believe, that were lower and you had to trim some off the snorkel, uh, which you could do to start with, but some of them were bottoming out in the bottom of the filter. After all of that was said and done, that was the uni filter. We then had, uh, we were running the uni filter on the snorkel, which required this spring, and there's been plenty said on the internet about this, when you leave this spring out, it gets to 7,000 revs and it won't rev anymore. So both have left them out. We're getting some sort of issue. But we found that they would rub through on the on the tank bracket here, didn't we? Mm. And we get about three, four, maybe four goes out of them. We didn't have a hole rubbed in them. So anyway, you know, we've just gone to the uh, the full um, funnel web filter system, and I'll just pop this out. Never doing it live on TV though, suddenly. Oh, well. every day of school day. Okay, so I'll pull the. That out. So there's a couple of different options. You can run them in the in the snorkel, and that's what we've been doing. And they've been great, mm. no problems at all. And then you can see the uni filter in there. Oh, sorry, the funnel web filter in there. Then you've got the other ones here. and you can just put it straight in the top. Okay. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. So there's a couple of different options with those. Uh, now, when you put them in the top, if you're pressure washing, and we pressure wash our bikes, and that's how I can tell our sticker kits are really good, because after two or three years, they're still there and they go. If you pressure wash this, you can get some water, gets in the top here and sits around the top of the air box, and there's not much of a lip to keep it out. We haven't any water in there, but it's something to be aware of if you're gonna do that style. That's why we've gone back to this style, okay? Um, we did try earlier in the piece. A couple of different styles. We ran open pipes, we tried some tunes. We got the big air box and the big filter and the hair, didn't go any better. On the dyno, made no difference. Take the air filter out, makes no difference. They don't run lean, so. Yep, that's it. I'd recommend probably the snorkel style if I was going to recommend, but anything you run, run the funnel webs, they were the best. We tried funnel webs, we tried, what's the one with Tusk? We tried a Tusk air cleaner and what was the orange brand? It wasn't Canyon, mm. someone else. Anyway, look, we come back. Twin I was, you're twin air. I was very critical of that. They made an improvement with that, um, but for us, it's the funnel web filters. So that's air filters here. So just an add-on piece, I'll add this in so it didn't sink in properly. Video editing is not my bread and butter. Uh, chicken um, rooster, and I've got one coming for Mick Strong. Run these rally seats, okay? They're taller, they're a genuine Yamaha rally seat. Um, rooster, you need to talk about it, not me. Well, I like it for the fact that my knees don't hurt at the end of the day. So yeah. you had too much bend on your knees before, so we're working yeah. on the ego, ergos between the, the seat height and the pegs, yeah? Yeah, it's not the, like, Touching the ground, a big bike, yeah, you can struggle if you're in a bad section, but I didn't need the seat for the height for my legs, for the ground, but it was uh, standing and sitting from the pegs all day. And we do big days, so. Yeah, we do do big days, so, yeah. And I found even sitting, the riding position is a bit nicer too. You're sitting more up over the, you can see over the dash, see more around, more control. That's yeah. about it. Alright, I'm going to talk foot pegs and steg pegs and twin pegs. Now, we run um, just these. These are a, uh, a Yamaha Genuine foot peg. They're off the WRF, the Enduro bike. We run those. They're, they're well priced. Um, uh, we buy them in bulk because we use them on our builds, uh, unless other people want something else. Um, they, you can replace them one at a time. I've thrown 200 kilos, this big thing, down the road, and it, it was real hard packed. Australian do and it dug a, a trench out with a foot peg and never bred the foot peg they fold up nicely the other way they're easy to get so 
we run this. This is a standard peg on this build and this will have those fitted. Um, so we run steg pegs and I'll explain what they are. Now we were approached by Andrew uh, Houlihan and we to run these twin pegs. So I've just taken them off Crash's bike. Crash had them on his bike uh, for about three months and done a lot of miles with them. And so what you do is you, you pull this the, your, um, pin out of your foot peg and this goes in down in here. There's a space where it bolts to here and, and it goes on here and, and you end up with and we'll move over that other bike in a minute, Rooster. You end up with that mounted up in there. And so you have this section here for your heel to go on. So when you load your foot back with that there in position, you come back and you load your foot on it, right? And it stops you sort of leaning back. Be beautifully made, beautifully CNC'd, lots of thought gone into it. Little things like the bolt goes in threads and then there's this nice little keeper in here that retains it. Really, really nicely made. I don't think I've you know, come across many products so nicely made, nicely machined. There's a whole pack of spaces and stuff so you can space that up so your heels rest on it. And we ran them for quite a while. Crash, I would say, did predominantly the, the, the bulk of the testing. Um, you had a ride with them, Rooster, mm -hmm. I had a ride with them. Um, so we'll go over and we'll compare them to a steg peg, for example. So my bike has steg pegs on them. So um, the idea with the steg peg is, so when I'm standing there, my, my calf leans back against the steg peg. Um, that's a three rubber peg. If you buy them, they come standard with one. You can get two, uh, and or the Desert King, which is three. Now look, these, these Crash said these were okay, right? He, he liked them um, until you got into real steep country. Like he said, when you were going up steep hills, it, they weren't getting the support you were getting from locking your calf in on the steg. So the steg peg, for example, you can put your foot on it, lean back against the calf so much that you'll actually, you can take a hand off the handlebar while you accelerate up the hill. These didn't offer the, the same support in the steep going. Um, like them, they were good, they were fine, but all overall, found the steg peg probably worked a bit better. Like I said, one of the nicest things I've ever seen made. Really, really nicely made. A lot of thought gone into them. If you're not riding a lot of steep stuff all the time, or well, you don't like the idea of that, 100% these would be a goer. But for mine, for us, probably the steg pegs overall have been probably where we'll stay and what we've been doing. Uh, fantastic product. Yeah, really well. And well supported by Andrew but and Andrew's company. But yeah, that's just where we're at with that sort of stuff. So if people are asking about those. 100% unless you do a lot of really, really hardcore steep stuff, you'll probably get away with these, but for us, we like those. We did bash plates back in the first video. Not much changed except we've gone to Euro 5 bikes now. The bash plates we ran on the Euro 4s were the Yamaha Hard Parts uh, bash plate, which was a great bash plate, no problems at all. Um, and I'll talk about water pumps later. Uh, remind me, so we go on that, so that's that was pretty good. We ran B&Bs, we ran a AXP Plastics, which is fine. Um, we ran a Motos uh, from Europe, which I've still got on my old bike that I'm gonna send to America, ship into America. Um, what else do we use? SW? Sorry? SW Motec? Yes, SW Motec one. So they were, they were on the Euro 4s. Now, we've gone to Euro 5, I've gone to it at Churvy's. Now, if you can scoot around that rooster, I know the bike's dirty, but I was riding this morning, so it is what it is. Right. Look, this is a good bash plate. Um, it's a plastic one. I I'm happy running a plastic bash plate because I'm not smashing Erzberg over logs and bits and pieces. I'm not bottom of the bike over rocks and stuff, so that's fine. Even though we went yesterday, it was close to doing that, it was okay. But it works fine now. I'll talk about water pumps while I'm here. I see people on the some of the aluminium bash plates, they're, they're riveting, welding a piece of aluminium along here. Look, that's fantastic. It's not gonna protect that. It's not worth an obligate you. Because if that falls over and a rock hits your bit of aluminium here, it's gonna bend it because it has no support here and it's aluminium anyway, and it's still gonna come and hit this. Now, Till this morning, we had not had a problem with a water pump cover in, like I said at the start, probably over 300,000 kilometers. 
We had one where Rooster had an altercation with a cow, of all things, and it ended up with a little mark in it here. And then today we thought we'd just get it ready for sale, and we thought it had maybe some coolant there, so we've changed it out. Now it's over here. That's it there. And it may have a weep in it there. But look, seriously, yeah. So what we'll do is I'm just gonna get the, the die grinder in here somewhere. I'll scallop that out a bit. I'll put a bit of DevCon or a bit of, what's the? JP Weld. JP Weld in it. And we'll throw that around for a spare. So that's it, that's one. That's only two now I know of mm. in the whole time. So the whole, oh, the water pumpkin. It's, it's back to fiction. Mm. I really believe putting that thing up the side ain't gonna make any difference. What were you gonna say? I was saying, I was probably that two step pedal because it's a bit bigger. Oh, yeah, so we were running two step pedals back before we went to the camel pedals. And you think that's what I might think have that's hit it. what got it there. I think that, that could be my one. So, How yeah. many brake pedals did you have, Rooster? Do, do I have to answer? Yep. I think I've changed it six times. So, you it is true you could break an anvil with a rubber I mallet. I reckon I could. We test shit. So <laughs> that's the that's the Cherbage one. Sorry about all the fans going with the pipe L That's a clean that's a clean there you go. Cherbage one, so take some video of that first one. Crash also has the SW Motec crash bars. And this one here, this is the B&B made here in Australia. Great product, good, good bash plate. You wanna get some video of that. It's really good, it's the new Euro 5. So that's pretty well it. There's the Motos one on my American bike. I, fit, I fitted one recently, uh, an 05 one to a customer's bike. Uh, so a Euro 5 one to a customer's bike. So it was really, really good. Uh, and here's one of our old bikes with the Camel Gut Gut on. Did a great job. Uh, chicken rode that bike. So yeah, it's great. It, it was a good, it was a good bike. So. That's probably where we're at. We've, we've swapped the plastic um, pretty well, except for you, Rooster. Because mm. I can break an anvil with a rubber mallet. Mm, probably. So, you want to argue about it? Like Not at no. all. And yes, I've had a couple of offs, and it hasn't let me down. Yeah, it's been so. pretty good. So, so that, that sort of covered that off. So, yeah, that's probably where we're at with bash plates. Again, I, I don't think, you know, I've seen a few of them now where they've come off here and well, I just, I still think if you, your bike falls on it, it's gonna bend back and it's gonna crack it. No matter what happens. We even had the aluminum guard, the bolt rider. SW Motec, oh, no, nah, that was an SW Motec guard. And I talked about those before. One of our bikes had the, the guard here, uh, Strongy's bike, had the guard here. And I was worried if you hit it at an angle, that these, where it goes into these bolts here, the big stainless bolts could actually break the, the uh, engine case. So. Yeah, for mine, I was happy to mm. run without them. And I think we've got the runs on the board to, to sort of say that's not an issue, you know what yeah. I mean? So, that's it. It's easy. Um, all right, so we'll get on the hand guards. We were running um, bark busters, and we've run bark busters for years. So it came about where always wanted to test and try things. I thought, oh, I'll get, well, we'll try some poly sports. And straight up, I've got to tell you, I was pretty impressed. They, they fit nicely. Um, we don't, for people that are asking about threads, we don't run the threads in the handlebars. We just get a, the, the Bark Buster or the Polysport ones. They just have the expanding plug that we've used for years and the Enduro box. So we run those. These have been fantastic. There's no more wind on your hand. There's no less wind on your hand. They've been great. Um, they just really easy. I, I don't know, they've just been, I like the idea here where you can slide this up and down. You can run this further up and down the bar. For mine, they were just great. So, 
people have switched over to polysport and one thing i didn't like we've always had a day glow guard like there's one of our old bikes a previous customer and we'll talk about the crash bars on that later um we swapped over we like the day glow just for safety side of things so yeah we, we couldn't do that so that's that's just the way it is we sweep around here for a sec rooster i get a lot of people on our rides going oh what do you get these stickers for do you oh these ones yeah, yeah. what do you get these stickers for are they for tourists no they're for australians now for the start of this last year there was three people i knew of in a month that are people i knew that had head-ons with vehicles okay when we come out of COVID, every man and his dog and his bogan driving his patrol with his southern cross tattoo and his gu oh fully sick mate they, everyone was out right and there was heaps of head-ons all of our bikes have them we, we put them we, we give them to customer at every ride I'm, I'm telling you now keep left and that's why we have those so people that ask them for videos and stuff do we do them for tourists no we don't and they are literally on every bike of ours yeah damaging those sw motex they're great they bolt in here at the back of the head the front of the head and they also clamp around the bar here they're heaps strong they're really good too pretty well with the exception of the crash all of our bikes have these yamaha crash bars they bolt into the engine block they go into the the shock mounts they'll go around the shock mount at the back of the engine that's used on the mt07 um, and, and you see the scare care pains on on facebook and that where they crack the engine block there's a spacer that goes in there i don't know of one that wasn't hit by a train that had the spacer in there that has broken the engine frame uh, engine block i do know of, you see one pops up clearly the space has been left out so it's what it is now rooster if you crash on these they, they, the tops will bend in one yeah. fun fact with these crash bars is um, something has to give. In the event of a, a fall or something, all that energy has to be expelled somewhere. If everything's rigid and tight, shit breaks, right? So these, these we find the tops of these will bend in a big enough crash, right? I well, actually have a crash in the desert, it was big enough that it actually somehow knocked this panel out, broke all this, and knocked the panel out mm. from behind the guard, uh, behind the brace, and the brace wasn't even bent. Anyway, this one is bent in, you can tell here. So this is Rooster's bike, no doubt, for the rubber mallet. Both been in, just this one. Right, so what we do is we just normally pipe next to the trailer at the end of the day, uh, grab a tie down off our big four wheel drive trailer that follows the support vehicle, loop it around here, have the bike sort of straight with just a little bit of a slack in the in the tie down and then just let the bike sort of bounce out and it pops it out. Excuse me. They normally bend in this little plate here or somewhere in here, I don't know, but they've been great, F fantastic. No crack blocks, don't believe everything you hear. On our bikes too, we a lot of our blokes will do zeroing out in the morning. Um, so uh, the lights are fantastic. I haven't had an issue with them. Uh, Chris from ADV Engineering approached us. And if you just turn that light there, you'll just show his tag. I don't know why this one is not. Pressure washer must have blown it off. Uh, approached us and said, listen, I've come up, I've made these brackets and they work with these steady six and a half inch lights. We've put them on, wired them through a relay, so every time you flick high beam on, the lights themselves come on. So that's been great. When you go back to low beam, there they flick off. These people that put them on a separate switch and the you know, car comes around the corner, you gotta turn your high beam off and turn that up, waste of time. That's easy, ADR compliant works great. They've been fantastic. Uh, just while I'm talking to you about the mirrors, we've stuck with the standard mirrors. Um, look, we've broken a few, let's be honest. Um, the mirrors are great. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the... Um, double take. Double take. Double takes. I found in corrugations out west, they just they just keep going down like this. And I never seem to be able to remember to fold them in. I just rode the bike. So we haven't gone with them. They've been great. Good mirrors. Looking behind is pretty important. They don't get run over, so yeah, we've just kept those. So I know I've had some questions on those. Background of steering dampers. We, um, we're still running the rally motos. I think Rooster's got one, I've got one, Crash has got one. Not all of our bikes have them. They've been great. Um, they're made locally here, not far from us in Australia. I see Camel selling them, the, these rally moto uh, MSC dampers. 
on the camel website in Canada, so that's a great thing for them. Um, great product. I actually got to remember to take mine off because mine's been on all my bikes since 2019, so I'd have to have done 140,000 kilometers. Some I really need to get that serviced. I keep forgetting. So. Uh, while we're talking about um, grips, Rooster and Chicken are running the um, ODI V2 lock-on grip system. Um, you like them, don't you, Rooster? Yeah, they go all right. Yep, Can't and move. they give you a few different cams in here. Um, as far as the, the throttle cams, I think it's the B cam from memory. Can you remember? Yeah. yeah. I think mm. it's the B cam. Okay, so they're lock-on grips. My ones, if you go over and shoot my ones, Rooster, I run a Pro Grip, I think. Uh, I run the same out there. I run the Pro Grips, the 801s. I like them. So, yeah, nice and soft. I get a good run out of them. So, they've been pretty good. Probably 90% of our builds on Tenere's, we, we fit a uh, Camel Rally Sweep exhaust. Um, when you combine it with our racks, and I'll demo it on the other bike in a minute, um, it, perfect protection. Uh, if you have any doubts about how because the weak point of the bike is definitely this bracket let's be honest but if you have any doubts about whether or not that hits have a go at the latest camel video uh five miles five miles of hell mm. uh in utah man they put those bikes through some shit. so anyway that's the rally sweep one he makes an enduro sweep personal preference i would rather slam a gentleman parts in a car door than run that 90 degree bend, it's just whatever it is bend, it just looks shit for mine, that's just me. Um, there's some other pipes around, we, we went through the whole thing, we tried out full open systems with tunes and without tunes and different air cleaners, we did all that. Uh, for mine now, probably a favourite's the, if we're not running a camel, the most of the crew run an arrow slip on and we'll have a look at those in a minute, Rooster will go and run around those. We also run a couple of Acropovics. For me, the Aquapovic sits out here, it's a bit big and a bit chunky and makes it a bit susceptible when it gets hit or something to rub on the swing arms, it's a bit bigger. All mine, I fit these, because I like these. I like the look, I, it goes with the Dakar look for me. Um, they, there were some people talking early in the piece about the first ones that had these cheaper uh, mufflers. That muffler's done 46,000 kilometers and it, it still works as well as the day come out, so they've been fine. I was a bit curious. These ones do sound just a fraction better, but I do like those. They've been great, had no problems with that camel product. We talked about the bobbleheads. So the other camel thing that we're real big on is for fuel range, is this five litre tank, which normally ends up about 5.3 litres. It's close to that when it's new, but it must have a tiny bit of expansion. Um, they've been great, we've had zero problems with them, not a single problem, they've been just, they're well made, well, we, we route this hose a little bit different to Corey's recommendation, but that's just us. They've been fantastic, we got them in clear and we got them in black, they've been great. We do have an Acherby's tank on Mix bike, um, so Mix got an Acherby's tank on his, it's pretty the same leverage. We don't have a Safari tank, I will not have a Safari product in my fleet, in my shed. I had too many problems with them early in the piece, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if any of that upsets anyone, I'm not here to upset anyone, but it's just been too much trouble with ex them expanding. Um, we did fit one here, uh, it was drilled wrong to start with, and then the second one leaked, the third one was okay. It just, it's just not for us, so it's up to you what you want to run. Trouble, a couple of things for mine. When we lifted the suspension back early in the first day and end of 2019, start of 2020, we noticed the centre of gravity in the bike changed really quickly. And I think these bigger tanks up top, plus then you're trying, they're up here, then you're trying to fit a tank bag on them, not for me. Okay, so they not for us, so we don't run them. But Mick's got the Cherbys one, he likes it. A few people have said if you fit a steering damper, go on this one. There has been issues with the Cherbys and this steering damper, but they, blokes I know that fit them have just basically got a heat gun, heat this up a little bit and just move it out of the way, okay? That's the tank bag I run. I won't even talk about them because you can't buy them anymore, so that's pretty rare.
Right, I'm going to talk about the rear brake and there's so much hype about it. Look, it was not my favourite part of the bike. Um, so, I mean, we tried different pads. So early in the piece, we, we, we tried different pads and, and I've got um, eight, six. All right, so the, the standard pad that comes on the 700 rear pad is this pad here. Uh, and you can see, you can see the centered, you can see the centered part of the pad, the reflection of the, like the copper, whatever the makeup of it is, right? So that's a, that's like, that's a more of a metal pad. And we, we then started using these organic style um, 660 pads. So it's the same, same pad, same shape. They, they run the same rear caliper. What I didn't gel to at first is why why have they gone to a, while this gave a lot more feel, that would fade, okay? Now, the reason they've gone to a centered pad is, it's a, it's a 200 kilo bike, so it's a 660, but it goes a lot faster than 660, a lot more potentially you could be using a lot more rear brake. You gotta remember, we're dealing with Brembo, which, you know, <laughs> are the got a braking, I think, and or as good as anything in brakes and, and a manufacturer. So there's a reason why they do it. And we'll start on fronts in a, in a minute, but so there's a reason why they have they run this, this they've chose that. Why they have the lever ratio they did, I don't know. So we, we went to, we tried to send it a, a organic pad, had more bite, but it would fade off. We tried fluids, we tried lots of other things. A lot of people then started going to these, um, these master cylinders. This is off a, a YZ, 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 or a WR. Uh, bolts, bolts straight in, no problem at all. Different piston size inside. Blakes would disconnect an ABS, but you can turn it off anyway, so that wasn't for mine. Blakes were trying uh, braided lines. I didn't think it was a, a, a line expansion issue, so they went to these, and this gave more power again. The trouble is, the YZ, YZ, WR pad is not as thick as that, and we run a reservoir up here, which holds a heap of fluid. This one here only holds fluid in here so it's 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 probably a quarter a third or a quarter of that capacity so what happened is you find that as you get halfway through the pad instead of you having the fluid here to compensate it can run out of fluid um so uh, that, and that's no good too if you're in the middle of a multi-day ride or whatever so um and then you can oh you can take it off and you can put more in but you, every time you open that your risk of contamination is huge and uh and brake fluid being as sensitive to moisture and stuff as it is so then when you go put new pads in, you gotta take it off and push it out and get some pad, fluid out. But look, it's just too much of a hassle. So, uh, and, and we didn't have, really have a great fix at that stage, um, but then all of a sudden, Corey contacted us and said, listen, I've got a pedal, I've been using it for 12 months. It's had about, I think you watched the video, it's had multiple, like it must've been 10 or whatever, don't quote me, different pedals. And he came up with that. So we got a pedal out here pretty quick. Smart, he sent one out. Uh, we didn't pay for that, that was a freebie. And um, and we ran it and uh, it was just a game changer. So with the last batch of bikes, we've bought a, a pedals for all of our bikes and it, you only have that, that's it. Okay, that's it. Yep, we're gonna have a look at Howie's in a minute and see where it's at and see how much flex and stuff it's got in it. So we switched them all out to them. Um, they've been a good thing. I see there's a bigger tip. Uh, I've just put the plate off the bottom of mine just to try a bigger tip. I didn't really have an issue with it. Um, yeah, it's been great. And the, the, this is so strong and so well made, but the, the clever part to this whole thing is how we gain the extra leverage without relocating this or having it is this angled clevis. So by now, instead of having the pivot there, move the pivot back. You got more leverage, reduce it. It's fantastic. It is the dark scuts. So over to Howie's. And you'll see here how much travel that's got. And you can see it's, it's all wobbly like that. All right, so we're going to talk about suspension. We, at the start, we've, we've covered this off time and time again, but I'll just quickly go through it. We had Ollens, Ollens kits, Ollens cartridge kits, Ollens shock with a remote reservoir. We had Rally Raid shocks. We had Rally Raid cartridge kits. We tried Plus 30s. We tried um, mm -hmm. Andriani kits. 
Uh, we had failures in the kits, breaking the shin packs and the early Andrianis. They fixed that. We tried tractive shocks. Um, we tried K Tech kits. And we've ended up with, as we're always going to with all the development, we've ended up back at the Technic uh, Stage 1 kits. Um, you can see these fork tubes have had a fair bit. This is, this is your bike, wasn't it? So this is what happens, kids, when you follow too close. Okay. It's got a new headline in it too, Rooster. What did yeah. it have stone chips on the headlight? No, no stone chips. Tell me, why did I have to buy a new headlight, Rooster? Um, the pole jumped out in front of me. So you had a service station fueling, it fell over and swiped down the pole. It didn't break it to its credit, mm. shit. But it, it scratched it, so. It was five o'clock in the morning. I don't and... care. I don't want excuses. <laughs> you were there. Yep. <laughs> so shock absorber. We're just running the, the OEM shock absorber. Get in there, Rooster. With the with the valving from uh, Technic, it's got a preload adjuster on it, standard. Look, they're fantastic. It's been set and forget. I did notice yesterday on mine, I thought the back was a bit harsh, then I remember I've taken the bags off, so. And we'll have a look at what's in the bags later. Just while we're talking about suspension, um, crash in the way then, well, actually, first of all, I got Nick to build me a set of um, standard forks with a Kashima coated top, so there's no stiction on your um, 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 seals. No, nah, on the spaces, the the bearings, the, the sleeve. What's the word I'm looking for? God, the bushing. No, no space, no um, stiction on the bushing. And we've also then got DLC um, diamond, like whatever coating, whatever diamond something coating, ceramic. Oh, Jesus, have to look it up. I don't know. Sorry. So there's no stiction on that. So when you put the seal or dust cover on that, you can slide it, it slides all the way down the tube. They've been fantastic. So the initial part of the stroke was just amazing. The corrugations, your hands are saying, you know, your brain's saying, I can see the corrugations, hands white. It just it was so smooth. Crash called it cheating. Uh, Abby wrote it, um, Lincoln wrote it, you wrote it. It was fantastic. So we got a set done for crash. Well, actually, turns out that Probably having less stiction. Um, we were chasing a couple of little things with it. Low speed wasn't where I wanted it. So Crash is significantly lighter than me. So we gave them the Crash and Nick built me another set and they've been fantastic. So that's why we've got the different color on the front there um, with the forks. And also these, these cases are what we've, so we had one, two, three um, customer builds come in and then we had uh, set of suspension for Howie's. This is all just just prior to Christmas, wasn't mm. it? Um, so you're going to take them back tomorrow, aren't you, Ruta? Yeah. Um, and that's how they send them, ship them around. So people go, oh, I live in Victoria, or I live in... That's how they ship them around, okay? You can send it in, you can wrap them up anyway. So that's how they ship them. So shocks and that. So we use all Technic Stage 1 suspension kits. Um, and the only difference is we've got two of them with the fancy fork. So, yeah, it's... Um, that's fine, it's, it's, it's a good thing. Just while I'm talking about suspension, we've suspended our bikes so we can ride them all day. I'm gonna say all day. If, if we've got, like recently we're in the Flinders Ranges, we, I, I zeroed out with Rooster before 6 a.m. We rode all day to about 3.30. Um, we got everyone into camp. We had some closures with rain and stuff. So then Crash and I went back out at four o'clock and rode till 10 o'clock that night, okay? You don't want something to beat you up. You want something that'll take the big hit. You want something that'll keep you out of trouble when you get it wrong. You want something that won't wear you out all day. You only have 210, 200 mil of travel to work with, which has always been a challenge bit for Nick. <clears throat> so we suspend our bikes so they can carry a weight and don't beat you up. Well, I look at a lot of these people and they go, oh, I'm gonna get the same shock as Paul Taurus. Paul Taurus weighs about the same as my broom over there. And he doesn't carry any bags and he doesn't sit on 100 kilometers an hour, and he does, it's, it's, it's a different thing. You don't, you need to think about what you're doing. And, and bike testers running around on unloaded bikes, jumping and skidding and, fuck, we're buying Giro bikes. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I'm more interested as an as a adventure rider and seeing a bike that loads a bike up and takes it on a ride and talks about that sort of stuff and talks about fatigue and, and dealing with all that sort of stuff when sometimes you've got to deal with it. And that's, that's some of your biggest dangers, those big days when you're fatiguing out and you're traveling at 110 kilometers an hour on corrugated or, 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 or um, bulldust holes or all that sort of stuff we deal with as an adventure rider out back. 
that's the sort of shit I want to see. I don't, I don't understand where we went to and where we ended up in this. I mean, I, I love watching Paul Taurus uh, do what he does. It's, it's amazing. And watching Corey in five miles of hell, that's, I, I, I respect and I love watching it. But it's not what we do as a core thing. I recently rode a Bono kitted bike. Um, so they had the Bono 48mm front end with the fiberglass guard, still runs the original twin discs, and don't start with a twin disc, and, and uh, the jacked up back suspension. And we rode it, and if, if you were on a, if you were riding as fast as you, as hard as you can, it was, it was good. But anything, when you come back to adventure style riding, it was no good, and the bloke that owned it also then told me that he's only really set it up to, to put in his van or his car, try and drive it to there and ride it for three or four hours. Well, it's not, a, it's not an adventure bike. And that's his thing, and I'm not criticising his jam. You, you can do him, but it's not what an adventure bike is. If that's what he wants to do with his bike, that's fine. But that's not what we're doing with our bikes. Our bikes, we go on 10-day rides, we go on 5-day rides. It needs to be able to do all that and not beat you up. You know, sometimes I leave here and I ride three, 400 k's worth of bitumen, and then I go into the bush, and then I start pre-running, and then I come home that night another two or 300 k's. So sometimes I've done 600 k's of bitumen in the day and 300 k's of dirt. That's a big day and the bike doesn't wear you out. I just think, you know, it, it relates a bit more to, to adventure riding than, than jumping around and, I don't know, mad skids and, and whatever. I, I just think maybe we need to look, because we went down the wrong road years ago on this and we, we built bikes that were great all day. You know, let, let, so not all day, but they weren't great all day. Lefty and I were, the WR, when we had the WR phase, we were zeroing doing this technique suspension development and some mornings we were finished 11 30 in the morning we'd leave at 5 30 ride like lunatics all day zeroing out putting up safety flags sometimes we got to the pub before it opened and then you know a couple of months later on the bridge to bridge and day four i rang nick up from technic suspension and said this is shit and he said why i said because it's so harsh and all of a sudden i figured we're riding like 90 percent of people do on a five-day adventure ride it wasn't gnc style smashing it so have a think about what you want before you go in for it. Be careful what you wish for. The other thing I get untold amount of questions on is tyres. The Pirelli Scorpion Rally Race, this is, this is a, 19, a 1990-21 front. These are the premier adventure bike tyre for the front of an adventure bike in Oz, maybe the world, I don't know. If you go to any of the big rallies, the Canadian Rally, the Terra Rally, this, everyone runs these on the front, or pretty well everyone. They're the Ducks Guts. Um, all the ones we tested today were the best. The one I didn't mind after that, and you can show later on on how is was the Rail Z Motos front, and I don't like Motos, so that takes a lot to say. Um, they're probably the pick of them. The rears we run over here. I've just got a new one here, the demo. There's a new one on the bike over there. These are the Rally Race. Um, they're a 140, uh, 8018. Now the standard bike, standard tie on the bike is a 150. If you put that side by side with the 150 STR rally, it's not a lot of difference. Okay. These have just gone up in price. Um, why do we use these? I could run a Motoz, and uh, I, you know, we make a lot of jokes about Motoz use the rubber that the forklift factory rejects because it's too hard. For me, a tyre, and tyre from a crew, if you're at that minute where you've made a mistake, you've misread the track, and all of a sudden you need to do something, you need every little bit of grip you got to be safe, these do. These have a good, good chemical grip, a good rubber grip, plus a good compound. I had a conversation with Alan Rowe when I tried to talk him into these, and he said they'll have no lateral grip because of this. They do have lateral grip. Rowe is a converted person. They have plenty of grip. If you if you don't run around with the thing sideways everywhere, you'll get three and a half, four thousand kilometres, you know, four and a half thousand k's at them. We bring them in, running big strips of rubber in between the ends. They're great. They're they're a great tyre. They're fantastic. They punch are resistant, they're really good sidewall construction, <coughs> speed rating's correct, they've been really, really good. Okay, so we'll run those. Now on Rooster's bike over here. Yeah. We've got the new, actually you might want to turn that fan off behind your rooster, it might make too much noise. Sorry about the fan noises, we've got, it's pretty hot here at the moment. So we've got, this is the new Pirelli Scorpion Rally. Now it's not a rally STR, it's not a rally race, it's a rally. You come around the side of your rooster, it's a 150, so it's slightly wider, but it's a 70, so it's profile slightly lower, an 18. And it's a tubeless tire. So it'll fit the Aprilia, it'll fit the Desert X, but it's not got this height that a rally race has. 
Um, Rooster's had this on now for quite a while. Um, you, well, you tell them, Rooster. Oh, it goes all right. It's got the traction on the hard pack, <clears throat> the tar. You're not getting the vibrations through the back end like the rallies. You said it tips in nice. On tips the tar. in nice. Gravel yeah. roads are okay. Gravel roads are okay until you get into the pebbly stuff on the side. That's when uh, Lincoln was following me, and he can comment on it. That uh, he just noticed the back end is sliding just a little bit more than yep. normal. And, and obviously not being as tall and the bigger knobs, once you start to get a wet grass or wet mud, yeah. it's not going to be as good. But look, it's a it's a, a great option for the Desert X and for the Aprilia. Um, you know, happy enough to run them there. And they've got a good sidewall. They're heavy because they're tubeless. We've got a tube in it, obviously. Mm. So it'd be even more punch and resistant. it's a harder case too, so I can run it a bit lower too. Yeah, yeah. Is what Lincoln in foot, um, encourages us to do. Yep. So that's that's been pretty good. Um, we do run we run a heap of tyres. So have a look there. Tyres are our biggest expense. Some of you will notice that uh, Crash and myself and Lincoln run our aftermarket wheels for no other reason than I just like sick bling. But I thought and wrongly so that we could go to a two and a half inch rim, and that's the same tyre that's on uh, the bike over there we showed. A two and a half has got a little more bag in it. We could go to a two and a half inch rim, and I could then run a 140, which is like over here, Rooster. It's like a full knobby, right? 140, and it could go on the two and a half inch rim. And yeah, you know what? It did. It went on there. It went on. It yeah, just... it was terrifying. Hmm. In the wet, on the bitumen, it was terrifying. On the dry bitumen, it's terrifying. These knobs walk around, they flex. We tried 606s, we tried the pretty mid hard. Scorpion, I don't know what they're called, mid hard anyway. We tried that, it just walked around, and then you could tear the knobs off it because that mm. tire is not designed for the torque that a twin cylinder has. Then the other thing is, it doesn't have a speed rating, so it turns out that they're no good for that. So, yeah, we're just going back to running the 140 rally races. Um, the other thing we run a fair bit of time to time, um, we'll try a 908 uh, rally rate rally, but it's it's, it's, I get a good deal on them for this is the biggest reason and they're hard and if we're gonna go and do a pre-run and we've got to take our time and we've got a lot of hours and stuff up our sleeve and it's a big long ride, we'll run one. There's one over here on Troy's bike. Um, they, they, they're not the grippiest thing, probably a little bit more than a Motos or about the same as a Motos. You can cut the front off the Chevron uh, I think Rod Fagger to put us on of that through Peter Payne. Um, look, they're great, they're consistent, they don't pull your pants down, they don't do anything shocking, they just do. For us, it's the prelis. So you would have seen on our bikes, we've been running these ADV Works uh, 20 litre bags. We've been running forever, and look, they've been great. This is the set off my bike. Um, Steve's been, we had a fair bit to do with the the first side of design, he asked us lots of questions. My favorite bag previous to this was the Wolfman um, bags. So we ran these, we've been running for a long time, they've been great. Couple of little things, probably we were a bit concerned about how strong the buckles were. I found that if you um, side swipe clip the tree or something, the buckle broke the inside out pretty reasonably, pretty quickly. I thought it probably should be better than that, um, but I guess they're all gonna break and the good thing about it is you can replace the buckle. Uh, and the other thing was the clips. So a lot of people said, and this one here for example, you couldn't put a lot on the clips. So we used to cable tie them together for a little bit of extra strength. They come unpopped pretty quickly. Everything else was really good, especially having this bar, this uh, bleed valve when you crank it down. And the color inside. And the color inside, yes. The blue inside made, made it easy to find things. These are the new ADV Works 20 liter bags. Um, they're not even on the website yet, I don't think. Steve. Got a set up here to replace a set for us. Um, lots of things. These new clips, uh, see they've got these plastic pieces inside them, give them extra strength. And I did notice they don't come apart. The other ones wouldn't do that. So they're really good. Um, they've put some molly webbing, molly, whatever they call it, molly webbing on it. It has a bleed valve. Also, they've got a bag that goes on the inside. Um, so you can put your gear in so you don't have to take them out when you get to your pub or wherever you're staying 
they also have a bleed valve on that, which is great. And also I noticed that if I put them in for what I'm packing, and I put them down in there, I can actually Velcro them oh, to nice. the top of the bag while I'm packing. Okay, I can also finish it off, pull it off there, roll it down, and then I can put stuff on top of it if I want to. Um, also now when you roll these up, he's moved the handle from the inside to this side. Okay, so lots of features there. He's really thought about it going a bit further. They've put these rings on both sides now, so you can actually strap things over the front if you want to. And what was always good about his bags is he had these straps, so if you were running like we do on a lot of our bikes, the crew bikes, the zero, uh, sorry, the sweep bikes especially, we run one bag, one rotor pack. You can loop this through, and I'll go over the other bike in a sec. You can loop it through. I'll go over to my bike. So if you're running one, one rotor pack, you could loop this around through here, back up through there, and I'll actually do it. I'm reluctant to do things on camera because it's always that looks awkward and look like I'm challenged or something. So you can go across there and then support your bag there. Another little feature, we've always had those, those little rings there to grab it, but I see now, let's put this Velcro one on too. Right at the end too, to hold yep. the... Yep, so that strap. can go across there. You could run it under your seat if you wanted to, and that gives you support for when you're running solo. When you're running solo, that's the other one. When you're running two bags, you can put them across for your support. And I thought, wow, that's, that's next level, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We don't run rear racks because the pendulum effect and weight and whatever. But then Steve pulls this out, shows me this, it comes with the bags. This thing here lays across the seat, hooks up here, shorten that up if we want to, etc. etc. Hooks this up, I'll put it around that way, hooks this up, supports it. Now I also have this area here that I can slide a strap under and strap stuff onto there. And I can still fit my fat ass in there. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. So yeah. So the ADV Works bags, they come in 20 litre and 30 litre. We run 20 litre ones, um, that's all we need to. You can get 30 if you're going around the world, etc. They do plenty of, um, what do you call those other bags up the top? Luggage bags. Yeah, there's a word for it, I'm sure. You know, this, right. is, this is the charm of our videos, isn't it? Where we don't really know, what's the name of it? I don't know, we didn't write it on the board, so. There's people yelling at us. That's all right. Must know for sure. Anyway, yeah, so they do, I'll come to me later, they do those as well. Um, while I'm standing here just chatting away, I, I want to talk about something else too. We've got a, an Aurora Rally kit. Um, we did feature some stuff on Facebook with a fit up of that. Uh, it was going together nicely. It was their first ever kit bought at Australia. It turns out it was had a couple of small issues. We've spoken with them, we've spoken with Andrew, that's all getting fixed up. So we're looking forward to getting that on one of the bikes soon and running that kit, it's it's spectacular. So that'll be really, really good to have a look at. Um, what else do we do in the future? What else is coming, Rooster? Covered off uh, polysport, bash plates, bobble heads, AXP, yeah, just turn it off for a sec. I'll get back to that. All right, so just getting towards the end, uh, I'll talk about sticker kits. I see lots of questions about sticker kits. We use uh, Rival Ink sticker kits. We stuck with Jack, who was from another company he had before. These kits uh, look fantastic. They are custom, this is the old kit actually. We've got new kits in, in process at the moment. Just a couple small changes, move some logos around, basically stay the same. But what I want to talk about them is the quality. Like these things, I haven't gone anywhere. We do nothing special. Like this, you know, with Dead Set, here's our pressure washer actually. Here's our Yamaha powered pressure washer. And we pressure wash, I just spray them with shit and we just pressure wash the shit out of them. You don't want to pump pressure wash, you don't pressure wash India seals and you don't pressure wash the chain and you'd be, you'd be half a brain with it. But there's nothing special with them. And these kits last. They don't peel, they don't come off. And I mean, if you have a look at some of these spots here, 
There's not a lot of bonding on plastic in that area there, and yet these kits don't move. This kit would have to be, that's probably the third bike this kit's on. So, you know, and when I say third bike, we swap all these panels over from bike to bike. That's why our old bikes present so well. So, yeah, if you want a sticker kit, get on to Jack or get on to someone at Royal Link, get on the team there. They have some stock kits, they can do your custom kits. They do a fantastic job, they really, really do. And so the sticker kits are well worth it. Protects your plastics, protects stuff like, it's just, yeah, it's just worth the money. So just to summarize, we're on the Central Coast, we run a tour company, that's our main gig. But we buy a lot of stuff, we test a lot of stuff. There's no cash for comments, no best everything, not everything we use is the best. Um, there's a ton of stuff, I guess, here that I could show you that we've tested that's, you know, we don't like or it's crap. And it's not just me testing, and that's the benefit of it. It's, it's this six, seven different, eight different guys and, 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 and Abby, let's not forget abs. And, and there's a lot goes into it. And we don't just ride it around the block and go, hey, this is the best thing ever. It's, 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 there's months and months and months ago. And when I say test something, and I had a bloke ask me yesterday, what do you call a test? I call it at least three to four months, maybe six months at least 5,000 k's. And, 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 and so they look like this. I mean, this was just a trail ride yesterday morning. It was, mm. it was you know, we ride the, the things. We don't just ride around the block with our road tires on and a, and, a, and a bag up the back and go and get a coffee and say, that's a test. It's legit. And I mean, I was only going through my bum bag, uh, not my bum bag, my, my tool bag swapping, my tools swapping over my side bags to realize how heavy they were. And I think we weighed it and it was something like, you know, 15, kilos worth of gear in the bag. I mean, just have a look here. Yeah, you know, I've got one front tube, two, one rear tube, another front tube, some wet weather gear. You know, that, that's just all nuts and bolts. You know, that, all that sort of stuff to keep Mick D's KDM going. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Just, just some stuff there. I run a big compressor now. I'm over those stupid, fiddly little shit compressors they rattle around on the ground and just over it it's just does such a good job it's so easy this is only out of one of the bags one one's over there so you know some tire levers a general spanner and you know, i don't carry stuff for me if this was just me i'd be carrying less than this but i've got to be able to do multiple bikes you know punch the wheel bearings if, if we were doing our wheel bearings on the side of the track i'd be losing my mind i mean we're really particular our wheel bearing service distances and stuff like that so that's that's what I carry and you know that's it gets me in and out of trouble all the time so it'll do the job there's chain pieces in here there's a chain breaker in there other bits and pieces uh, I did say I'd talk about this I said I'd talk about this and you know I'm not a welder um there was one like this um uh, that someone manufactured made that was like soft and people were bending it and then they were going oh you, you can't do it up you know you shouldn't do it up so tight and, and don't do it the manufacturers recommend attention well i don't know what the manufacturer recommend attention is but i wouldn't be telling people not to do that because if the wheel falls off who's paying when that someone gets killed but you need to be able to do it tight we made these we just got a combination spanner cut it off welded a, an allen key to it which is not a mill and um and made our own um the benefit of these is you can jump on them uh, with your big uh, size 11 Gurney boot and don't start my boots. Um, and you can do the same with the front, and the front doesn't need to be that tight anyway. Look, it's just for mine, make your own. It's easy enough, carries in your, in your bag or whatever. Uh, do the wheel up tight enough, you don't want it coming loose. The other thing we do with all our bikes and, um, is we move the axle, we turn the axle around. So when they come brand new, the axle nuts on the other side, we move it this side wide or we move it this side rooster? Because if it's too tight, you can actually stand on it and yep. undo it. Yep, so you can put your foot on that now and undo it because it's lefty loosey, righty tighty. Um, and that's pretty well about it for, for us. Um, I'm sorry if it's not all, you know, jumping up and down nairs and graces and I haven't got a gronk walking around making funnies and whatever. It is just, we just do what we do. Um, we do heaps of miles, heaps and heaps of miles, there's a heap of us. Um, and um, we're damn happy with these bikes. I think the best thing I've ever ridden on the job. Um, you know, we've just knocked stuff around. Whose bag would have broken straps, Rooster? Not mine. Jesus, it is yours, Rooster. No, it's mine. That was a cow. Uh, don't 
Don't have, don't have a cow, man. Don't have a cow. Brand new bag. Put it on the day, the day of. Anyway. And we've got some new updated ones for you. So yeah. um, if you have any questions, please fire them away. Put them on the YouTube here. We'll have a look at them. Um, I... I don't know if I missed anything major. You can go back through our videos um, and have a look at some of the stuff there. We've tried a fair bit of different stuff and we'll keep trying stuff, although I think we've sort of run out of things to try. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, um, it is, well, this is a crash, got a broken buckle there too. So that's, that's been a bit of a link. So we've got some new bags and, and the buckle's a lot stronger and we're looking forward to it. Sweet so nice. yeah, if you have any questions, fire them in and, and uh, go from there. Thanks very much.